we talked to Yuka about this before the show. He, he knows he didn't get hired to sing. And he said <laughs> if, if it was the case, he'd be shitting himself. That is true. That is true. Welcome to another episode from Takedowns to Breakdowns with ANP, and today we're here to talk about Nightwish. Now, we went to see them in Toronto. That was their first show of this North American tour that they're currently on. And after we did the vlog and after we did the concert review, I saw some comments in our video on our own channel asking us, so how was it without Marco? Did, did you guys miss him? Uh, how did they do it? Uh, how did they manage without his incredible voice? Yeah, and, and What happened? And we've seen Nightwish twice and you know, we saw it with Marco and without him. And it's the same roster other than that. So I think we have like the perfect side-by-side -side comparison here. We do, but we also have to keep in mind that the venues were absolutely night and day from one another. Oh. And that plays a huge role on how you perceive the show. But I think Marco's uh, input into Nightwish or, or the lack of Marco's input into Nightwish, the venue doesn't play as much of a role. It comes down to singing, it comes down to playing, it comes down to how you how you enjoy the show. Yeah, because I feel like both venues sound-wise were good. I feel like just... Yes, the, I agree. The one we saw, uh, the one, the what's, what was it called, Drake's new venue? Uh, History. Yeah, that one I feel looks way better. Oh, it's than the last one. What venue. a great venue for but, concerts, But sound-wise, the they, were, they were both really good. So I agree, I agree. I, I think it's still, you know... We have the perfect comparison here. I think so too. I think so too. So let me start off by saying this. Uh, when they brought Yuka to play bass, obviously they didn't bring Yuka to play bass and to sing. That was yeah. never that was never the goal. And and I know you, we talked to Yuka about this before the show. He, he knows he didn't get hired to sing. And he said if, <laughs> if it was the case, he'd be shitting himself. That is true. That is true. Because Marco has a very unique tone, a very unique voice. And he added something special vocally to what Nightwish is all about outside of the bass playing. So obviously they brought Yuka in because they wanted somebody who could play the bass to be on par with what the band is trying to do and with the songs that they're gonna be performing live. And I think if you're looking for a bass player who can come in into the fold, who's not gonna create any waves, who's gonna be the perfect fit, who's a great guy to hang, I mean, there's yeah. no nobody, there's nobody in this in this whole wide world more chilled than our boy Yuka. There, there isn't. There, this guy is, is... He's wholesome. When you look at in the dictionary the definition of chilled, there's a picture of him. There's a picture of him. So the dude is super chill. So they brought him in to play bass. That's all they really need from him. And that's all they really asked of him. Now, the question becomes, how do you fill in on certain songs? The when vocals. The vocally, because Marco had... I mean, he has huge shoes to, to, to fill. Like, I mean, it's, he's not the easiest guy to, to replace. Now, before we, you give me my, your opinion, and before I give my opinion, let, let, let me just tell this quick story of what happened during the show. So, I think it was Ever Dream was on, and it's time for, for Marco's voice to come in. Or was I Wish I Had an Angel? I think that was... What, was that one first? I think that, that was one, one first, and that was yeah, Ever yeah, Dream yeah. after. And so, it's, it's that time when you're like, oh, it's Marco's voice is about to come in. And I could hear a voice. Yeah, we so, both heard the voice. Okay, but I wasn't really looking at the stage. I was looking somewhere. I think I was looking at the at Kai on drums. My my eyes were not on on floor and Troy. My eyes were somewhere else for for that specific moment. And I hear the voice in the background, and I'm like, "Wow, man, are they piping in Marco's voice?" Yeah. So I turned to you as like, "Dude, can you believe they piped in uh, the backtracks of Marco's voice?" And then you were like, "I, I said." No, that's not him. Because I saw Troy's mouth moving toward, like... He was singing. He was singing, yeah. I saw his mouth moving uh, when, you know, the Marco when, parts were coming on. And I'm like, that no, that's him. Like, I, I see him moving. I see him, you know... And then I was like... He's not, he's not lip syncing. No, no. And I was like, are you sure? Because that was... I mean, it, it wasn't Marco, but live... No, the sound live is always going to be different from the yeah, studio, yeah. right? So but it was very close. It was very, yeah, close to the point where I thought if there were, they were, there were back tracks. Yeah. yeah, I thought they were piping it in. I was like, are you sure? Because that totally sounded like they were just piping it in. And you're like, no, man. It was Floor did some of the vocals and Troy did the vocals. I was like, holy shit. That was really good. Yeah. To, to the point that if you're not looking and you're not really paying attention to you who's can't singing, tell the difference. you really can't. Live, you can't. Live, you can't. Probably on the albums, yes. Oh, no. in, in studio, is a completely different. Live, because there's so much else going on. There's so, much, so many things happening. You, I, I couldn't tell the difference. Uh, this is the honest truth. I'm, I'm not pumping anybody's tires. This conversation happened... Right after the concert. Right after the concert. Because after the concert, I was like, dude, I couldn't believe they... No, they didn't. It was Troy singing. 
Really? That was yeah. him? Wow, um, unbelievable. So for those of you worried about how is it going to be certain tracks that have his voice coming in because he brings that lower tone to the track, uh, it creates that, that dissonance between what Floor is doing and what he was doing. Uh, I, I've read a lot of comments, people wondering, how are these tracks going to sound live? Are they even going to perform them anymore? What's going on? Yes. The answer is yes, they're going to yeah. perform them. And the second part of the answer is, Troy's doing the vocals. And you know what? I'm not fucking hating it. I don't hate on it, yeah. No, I actually, it fooled me. So uh, l l let's put that out there. It fooled me. So if it fooled me, I think he's doing a phenomenal job. Live is fitting the bill. He, I, he, you fooled me at the start, and then I started looking around at everybody, and I like, saw... where's this voice coming from? Yeah, and I saw his mouth moving. I'm like, fuck, is he the one singing? Yeah, yeah, he was the one singing. Unreal, eh? So for, for those wondering the what is going to be like... Don't worry, it's going to be absolutely fine. Nightwish is still Nightwish. Yeah. And Troy is doing a phenomenal job filling in in those specific songs, uh, the spots where Marco used to sing. Uh, if Once again, if you're not really looking at them, and you're kind of just like enjoying... Everybody. Be because I was dancing, I was jumping around. Yeah, yeah. I was like fist bumping and shit. I was all into it. So it's not like every second I'm looking at everybody's mouth to see exactly what they're doing. It fooled me. I was all in it. I thought it was Marco, like some tapes of Marco in the background being piped in, so whatever. I'm glad it wasn't, because I'm glad they're not going that route. But uh, I'm also glad that Troy is definitely uh, doing the job. Yeah. So I'm totally happy with the situation. Uh, totally happy. Yeah, same. Now, two things I want to I wanna mention to you, because I want to get your input on this. First is, you mentioned that we saw, them for, we saw them before with Marco, now we saw them without Marco. How, how do you categorize... Bo not, not necessarily to do with Marco, but overall Nightwish. H how did that first performance hit you as far as watching Nightwish for the first time? And how did this performance hit you? Because this was a completely different performance. I think performance-wise, I think this one was way better. But nostalgia-wise, I think I'll always hold the first time we've seen Nightwish to like a T because first time seeing Nightwish, and not only that, that was like the midst of our like Nightwish high we had on the channel. So, I think that show cemented our appreciation for the band. We yeah. liked the band coming in. We liked the we band. Were, we were starting to like the band. We were doing more, more and more on the channel. And that's what cemented the love for the band was going to seeing see them, them live. live. So, I think that will always have a place in my heart. But performance-wise, I enjoyed the performance of uh, the one at the... At it? the History. At the History, way better. Wait, it's a great venue. Uh, let me say this uh, before we go into the next, the last point of discussion here. I, I had... Goosebumps. The first time I saw Nightwish live, I felt it was almost like a religious experience. Yeah. I, I, that connection, I, I was starting to like the band more and more, and when I saw them live that first time, that's when I knew that this, this band was going to be one of my bands for the rest of my life. Honestly, this, this is the honest truth. Seeing them this time around, I felt even more strongly about it. I, I really felt that I, I was touched by an angel or something. The performance was magnificent. I was blown away. I had a great time. Last time I couldn't jump around. This time I was jumping around. I was dancing. I was I was having the time of my life. I, I felt goosebumps with every single song. I try to savor every fucking minute yeah. of every single track, like to the T. My eyes were going from side to side as I'm enjoying everything because I wanted to have those memories in my mind. And, and I remember the day after the performance because sometimes you hear people that go... Uh, to every single show or that see the band in one tour run. Yeah. They see the band like five times and it's the same set and you, you're just seeing them at different venues. And I sometimes you wonder like, really? I mean, you saw them once. Like, you really need to go see them? After, the next day, I, I'll be honest, if I could go on this whole North American tour and see them perform every night, even though it's the same set, I, I would. would. Yeah. 100%. This time, for as much as that first time watching them was important to me because it, it's really... It's really where the roots uh, started, as far as me and Nightwish are concerned. This time around, I felt way more connected with the performance. Yeah. I felt more connected with the band. And I really left feeling like a part of me left me when the show was over. When the show was over, it was almost like that situation of you saying goodbye to a relative and your relative going away and you don't know when's the next time you're going to see them again. That sense of departure, that sense of, of happiness because you got to spend that time together, but at the same time, sadness. Because you don't know if you will be able to spend any more time. Yeah, and you don't know if that time is going to come or when that opportunity is going to arise. I, I, don't, I can't remember the last time I went to a concert 
that left me feeling so happy on one hand, but at the same time feeling so sad and, and like a part of me was gone the next day. Honestly, I don't remember ever feeling this way uh, with any band that I've ever seen live. These guys have a unique chemistry that when they perform is not just a performance. Like I said earlier, it really becomes a religious experience between them and the fans. And, and I, I thought it was absolutely magnificent. Now, the last point of discussion here is that on that same video that we did the Nightwish vlog, there was some voices saying that uh, without Marco, it's not Nightwish anymore. Oh. And I think that these same voices were the ones that used to say that without Taria, it's not Nightwish anymore. Yeah, exactly. Like, what's your take on that? Like, the I'm not about the people who said that about Taria, but the people now who are saying that about Marco. I, I, I don't know what to say to these people. Like, I, I, I really don't. I know I said something very clever when he told me the first time, but now I can't remember it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like what? The, what the? What, what is there to be gained? Like that? That feeling like this person left, so therefore it's not the band anymore. I, I don't get. I don't get exact, that. Uh, and it's it's not that like he was kicked out. Yeah, yeah he, he left, left of his own so, of his own accord. So there was there's no bad blood. No. Uh, at least what we know, but there's no, no bad blood. I, I, as far as I know, there's no bad there's, blood. There's no bad blood. Um. So like I don't know what the problem is. I also feel like these people also haven't seen them live without him yet. They're just saying it to say it but once you see them live then then you can have your opinion but listen seeing them live without marco obviously you know not seeing him on stage in his all of his glory you know it's kind of the bass wizard is not there the bass wizard's not there but you know yuke is a wizard in his own way and yeah. he's letting his beard grow. i gotta say though <laughs> during the concert I, I was i didn't do a lot of moving because uh you're having some neck problems i'm having some yeah like you know muscle issues okay we don't need to know about your health history uh but i was enjoying in in a way where like i was standing stoic and just looking at everybody because i wanted to see the passion in them and everything in them that's why i noticed the whole uh the whole singing Troy. Yeah. yeah um i'm looking at yuka just having a time I, I, he fits in the band. He though. fits in the band, man, and, and it really gave me this this happiness in me that, like, yeah, we know Marco is not on stage right now, but this guy is on stage, and this guy, I, I love him so much. Just seeing him so happy on stage, playing his music, uh, playing the music, doing, you know, interact. I mean, the, the, the relationship with him and Kai was already there from Winterson, so obviously, obviously that chemistry is going to be there. But you even see him and Empo just like exactly. interacting with one exactly. another. Exactly, going up to each other. Yeah, playing, seeing looking that, at each other, like seeing, kind of like facing off. And seeing kind of, that shit just made, you know, the, the concert even better. I think it made it more rock. It did, it did. It made it more rock. Even Floor with him interacting as well. He I, fits so well into the band. And and I I, I feel like he is, he, that he feels like he's, while he's not a, uh, um, an official member of the band, he feels welcomed by the band. Yeah. He, he really does. And it shows on stage. He, he's not he's not treated any differently. He's not an outcast. No, he's not like just... He, he is technically a hired gun, but he, he, they're not making him feel as such. Like, he, he's really welcome within within the Nightwish camp. He's not, and their, shows. Session, he's not their sessioned bass player. Yeah, he's a, well, he, technically he is, but he's a little bit more than he's that. He's a little bit more. Yeah, he's a little bit more than that. They treat him with a lot more respect than just that. So... Uh, and it's nice to see that. It's nice to see the interaction. It's nice to see that he's happy being there. He's happy playing these songs, performing these songs. Uh, and and for me personally, I don't get the the critics. Uh, they're not really criticizing him. They're just criticizing the band in general for not having Marco there anymore. Like it's their like it's their fault. Like it's their fault. But so. Like I said, I feel like these people haven't even seen them without him yet. I think what the question is, have, it, have they even seen him with, with him? him? Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's like, another question altogether. But like, you have to you have to experience something before you can full on hate something. You can dislike it at the start, but if you can if you go out there you, I, on on the worldwide internet and you start proclaiming these these blasphemous remarks, right? You need to at least experience it, and that experience, you know, with Yukon bass, Troy with the the vocals. I gotta say, it, it was. It is. All the roles were fit. All the roles were fit. I mean, it took two guys to to make up one Marco, <laughs> but they're doing it really well. They are. I, I, the only thing I, I'll give credit to, I'm not giving credit to the to that type, kind of comment because I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, I don't think you're a fan of the band if that's how you feel. If you're especially, a fan of the band, especially if you've gone to a show and you've seen what what we've seen and experienced. What exactly. We experience, if you're a fan there's of the really band, nothing missing. If you're a fan of the band, you'll be with the band. Until they start making shit music. 
should be about the music, not who's making the music. Exactly. Uh, and, and that's where I want to finish this off. Because I can understand you saying that when I look at Nightwish on stage right now, it feels like there's somebody missing there. Because Marco had a larger-than-life yeah. presence. Nobody's going to disagree with you. I'm I sure totally agree. if you ask Yuka, he'll tell you the same thing. He's not looking at replacing him. He's just looking at playing his bass lines. That's it. That's all he's trying to do here. So I, 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 feel, I, I feel your... Your sentiment that when you look up on stage and you don't see Marco in his beard and his glory, you feel like there is a part of Nightwish that it's missing. I get it. But at the end of the day, I'm not going there to just see people. I'm going there to hear them performing the songs that I love. Exactly. And as far as the performance is concerned, there's nothing missing. Nothing. Zero. Zero missing right now. Okay, you could say in the future, well, they're not going to be able to do a song like this or a song like that because... Yeah, but you don't know what you're missing because they've never made those songs. So anyways, exactly. you're just speculating on what you could possibly miss. Plus, who knows? Maybe Trevor will do more of the vocals in the in the future. Exactly. And he has a really good, uh, good set of vocals. Maybe they'll bring some harsh vocals. I know Yuka can do harsh vocals. <laughs> don't go too far, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just putting out there. Maybe you can do some harsh so, vocals. Yeah, go somewhere where they've never gone before. So like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It would be kind of cool. They've never done that. So that would be... That would actually be really good. Yeah, have some harsh vocals on a track. I know all the Nightwish people right now are like, what the fuck are you guys saying? Uh, Don't knock it until you try it. Stop bringing your stuff into my Nightwish. <laughs> I, I just think that those kind of comments are so defeatist. And, and they add absolutely nothing to the discussion. Add nothing. It, it, it's actually Those comments away. are just to put people down. It's to put people down. It's to put the band down. And it's almost trying to deflate the balloon of happiness that the people that go to the shows, that follow the band, that enjoy the band, are feeling. Just because you're having a shitty day or you have shitty opinions, it doesn't mean all of us have to be, you know, uh, faced with them. Or we exactly. Have, well, unless you're watching this channel, then you're listening to our shitty opinions. But, uh, right, uh, Moncroft, you, you, you're going to comment in the comment section. Our biggest so, fan. Yeah, our biggest fan. So, anyways, uh, I can't believe I just gave him a shout-out. You gave but, him a shout-out, finally. Uh, uh, finally, finally. So, any, anyways, his hate makes me smile. So the more, it does, the, it does. The more you hate me, the more, I, the more I smile, the more I laugh, because that, that's how I work. Haters don't, don't take my sleep. So, anyhow, I, I just feel like those kind of comments do absolutely zero to, 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 the, to the fans of the band, to the band, and to what the band is trying to do. If that's how you feel, you have a very narrow view of what a band, specifically this band, is all about. This band has always been more than just the band members. It's always been about the music and like the experience that that music creates. And most bands are like that. It's all about the music. I feel like every band, it's all about the music. You know, it doesn't matter who's playing the music. If the music's good, the music's good. I can't remember. I can't remember when when. Um, when the, they changed drummers, when Kai came in, I wonder if people at that time said that now Nightwish is not the same. I can't remember. I, I can't remember. For the that. life of me, I can't remember if anybody had said that. Me but either. I'm sure they did. I'm sure somebody did. I'm sure. Oh, the drums now are not going to be the same. You know, this guy, who, Kai, who, who, who's this guy? What does he know about drums? He doesn't know anything about drums. I feel like, you know, it's funny. Out of the entire band, he's the one, uh, like, the drummer. Out of the entire Nightwish, the drummer, I feel like, would be the last, like, if, if uh, Kai left and now there was a new drummer. I feel like. There wouldn't be any like discussion about it, but any other any other member, any other member. I, I think if you look, some of the guys have been there for a long time. Some of them have been there since the exactly. beginning. Exactly. So obviously, there's this there's, there's this, this loyal, loyal loyalty, loyalty loyalty. So I mean, I there mean, is that too. I, I would be I would be mad. I would definitely be mad. I, I, but I, it's hard for me to picture Nightwish with Al Kai. Yeah. Uh, where are you going to find another drummer at that level? There's not many. There's not many. There's not many. He, he's in. A, he's in a little bit of a class of his own. He's a high class. I, I guy. can use. I can use one hand to count how many good drummers that, in my opinion, fit his shoes and could drum for Nightwish. In one hand, I can think of five names, but that's about it. And and some of them already have gigs, so it's not like they're looking for a job. So let's leave Kai where Kai is. Let's keep our boy there. But anyways, I, I just I just feel like there's always going to be something negative to be said. If Troy left. And some guy came in and he played the same instruments and did the same thing. I, somebody would say somebody that would without say Troy, this is not Nightwish anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to be, in, in all honest opinion, I think the only person that we could truly say that is Thomas. Because he is kind of Nightwish. You take him out of the band, there's no Nightwish. I think that's I think that's the only one where I concede. Yeah. That's the only one where I'm willing to concede. Outside of that, everybody is just it's just a piece. 
But at the end of the day, it's not about the pieces. It's about what those pieces do when you put them together. And the yeah. music that they do is phenomenal. This show that we went to, goosebumps all night. And it was not because there was a cold draft. The music was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? No, I think we, we got everything. I can't believe I gave the dude a shout out. All right, it is what it is. You said you would never. Ah, he's going to jizz his pants right now. Yeah. Uh, if he can still do it, if he doesn't have to take Viagra well, every time gonna be, he wants it's to gonna, jizz. It's going to be three comments after his first three comments because he comments like in I, the order of the video. His record is like 14 comments. Yeah, yeah. I bet you on this video. doesn't wait until the, until the end. No, he's, he's like live commenting. He's live he's commenting. Live, it's I like bet you stream. anything on this video, guys. Look in the comment section. Mooncroft is going to have 20 comments. I bet you. You want to bet? New record. All right, new record. Let's set a new record, bro. Let's set a new record. Come on, bring the hate. All right, guys. On that note, we'll see you all at the next video. See ya.